What's up? My name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll show you how to set up a Spigot or Bucket 1.19 Minecraft server. It's incredibly simple and by the end of it, you and your friends will be able to play together using Bucket and Spigot mods as you would have hoped. This video will show you the official way of doing this. It may seem a bit longer, but it's the legal and proper way of doing things without worrying about viruses and things like that. You can download the bucket or spigot jar directly from any website, though they are not official at all. There is no official download for bucket or spigot. Anything that tells you otherwise is not telling you the truth. In the description down below, you'll find a link to the Spigot MC build tools website over here. All we need to do is look at the prerequisites where we'll click Windows, Linux, or Mac, depending on what you're running. For me, I'll click Windows here to jump down to it. You'll see Git. All we need to do is click here to download it. So I'll open this in a new tab and we'll need Java. For anything above 1.17, we'll need to download and install the Open JDK 17 from here. I'll open this in a new tab as well. So Git for Windows, click Download, then click in it to open it up. When it's done, click run. All we have to do is click next, choose a place to install it. Next, yes, if prompted, leave everything as is here. All we have to do is keep clicking next until Git starts installing and wait for it to complete. Then click finish and we're practically done there. Now for Java, as you'll JDKs, all we need to do is look for Zulu on the left hand side, then click download now right below it. This is for builds of open JDK. That's what we're looking for. So download now. It'll then scroll us down, select Java version 17 LTS operating system. You can choose Windows if you're running Windows. Architecture, you'll need to choose 64 bit more than likely, and you'll see only one download. Click MSI on the right hand side to download the installer and click in it to open it up when it's done. Click run and the installer will then pop up. Click next, leave everything as is, next and install. If prompted for admin, click yes. Wait for the install to complete and then click finish here. Now we're practically done. We can start setting up build tools to install our server. We'll scroll up and click running build tools to jump down to the download section for build tools. Click the first link over here to download the .jar file that we'll be running. There are some instructions here, but don't worry, I'll be running through it with you. On my desktop, I'll make a new folder called say BT for build tools. It doesn't really matter. And I'll drag buildtools.jar into this folder here. Now, all that we need to do is open a command prompt in this folder. So at the very top, I'll click where we can type in here, type in CMD and hit enter to open up a new command prompt in the correct folder. Now inside of him, all we need to do is look back to the build tools website over here. I'll scroll up all the way to the very top and I'll choose whatever version I'd like to build. For me, it'll be 1.19. I'll then copy this bit of text over here with right click copy. Inside of our command prompt window, I'll paste it in here, java jar build tools jar rev 1.19. Note that if you'd like craft a bucket as well, add a space followed by hyphen hyphen compile craft bucket as such. Then we can simply hit enter, build tools will work its magic and create us a spigot or craft bucket jar file. It'll first download required things and install them. You'll see a bunch of files being created in this folder over here. And note that because we are building a server practically from scratch, this will take some time to complete. For example, as you can see here, it's downloading craft bucket and spigot versions of the server to compile later on. And there we go. We've now created the craft bucket jar. Pretty simple. Note that if you want to create spigot instead, don't include compile craft bucket and you should be given the spigot jar. You can just take it out and hit enter to rerun everything and build the spigot jar if you do need it. Checking next to the build tools jar over here, you can see craft bucket jar. This is the server file we were creating here. And there we go. You can see after a couple of seconds, we now have a spigot jar as well. I just reran the command. Awesome. So pick what you want here and we'll be moving it to another folder. I mean, I'll be creating a spigot server. I'll create a folder on my desktop called spigot and I'll drag the spigot jar into here. Then I'll open up the folder and we can start setting everything up. So what's next? 
Well, that's creating our run.bat file. Right click, new, and choose text document. Select everything including .text, and we'll call this say run.bat. Hit enter, click yes when you're prompted, and you should see the icon changes and it's now a Windows batch file. If you don't see .text, you'll need to click view at the very top on Windows 11, show, and make sure file name extensions and hidden items is ticked as well. On Windows 10, you'll see view at the very top, simply make sure file name extensions and hidden files are ticked there as well. Then we can right click run.bat and choose edit, where it'll open in notepad or your favorite text editor. Now, inside of here, we'll be copying and pasting some text from the description down below that'll look like this. Basically, we need to make sure that spigot.jar matches the name of the file here. So, I'll call this spigot.jar, or I'll simply rename spigot.jar in my run.bat to match the file in my folder. This is probably the better way of doing this. You'll need to change this to craftbucket119.jar for craftbucket, of course. Then XMX is the maximum amount of RAM that our server is given. Currently, it's set to 4 gigabytes, but we can change this to pretty much whatever you'd like as long as your PC has that amount of RAM free. If you know what to type in here, change it, save the file, and your server is then ready to be run. If not, hold Control Shift and press Escape all at once to open up the Windows Task Manager. Head across to the Performance tab. Mine looks a bit different as I'm running Windows 11 Insider, but yours should be pretty much the same information-wise. On the Memory section, you'll see how much RAM is currently in use and how much is currently free. We can give our Minecraft server as much free RAM as we have available, though do keep in mind you want to keep some available for Minecraft, Windows, browsers, etc. For example, if Minecraft and Windows is taking up 6 gigabytes of RAM on a computer with 16 gigabytes of RAM, we have 10 available. I would be comfortable giving my Minecraft server 8 gigabytes of the available 10, leaving 2 for Windows, browsing the internet, etc. So, don't give Minecraft all of your RAM, but give it quite a bit of your free RAM. You can type in whatever you'd like here. For me, I'll be entering 8. You can swap out the G for a capital M and multiply by 1000 to get the same thing. 8G is 8 gigabytes, 8000M is 8 gigabytes as well, though it's 8000 megabytes. It's just a different way of writing it if you'd like to get more specific and give it, say, 4.5 gigs of RAM, etc. I'll leave it at 8 gigabytes, save the file, and close it. Then I'll run run.bat, and it'll start up our server, or at least try to. For the first run, it'll generate some files, then quit out. I'll press any key to continue, and open eula.txt. We'll need to change false to true, save it, close it, and we can run run.bat once more to start up our server properly this time. This time, it'll run all the way through to completion, and we'll be able to join it in just a moment. While this is starting up, I'll start up my Minecraft launcher. Then I'll select Vanilla Minecraft from here, and I'll click Play. When the game starts up, I'll head into Multiplayer, and Server, and for the server address, because Minecraft's running on the same computer I'm running the server on, I'll enter 127.0.0.1 localhost. This means my own computer. I'll click done and you should then be able to join your server in just a moment by double clicking it. That simple. There you go. You can see techno joined, logged in, etc. We're now playing on our custom spigot or craft bucket server. We can alt tab out and type op techno or whatever you'd like to give yourself operator for example. Then I'll run game mode creative and congratulations you're now an admin on your own private server. Awesome, but it's a bit quiet. How do we get other people to join us? Well, for people on the same local network, as in Wi-Fi or Ethernet, they need our local IP address. I'll hold start, press R, and inside of here, I'll type in CMD, then hit enter to open up a new command prompt window. Inside of here, type in IP config and hit enter, then look for the way that you're connected to the internet. Look for IPv4 address right below it, and this is your local IP address, 192.168 usually dot one, followed by a different number. Keep note of this, as anyone on the same Wi-Fi network as you, or cable network, can connect to your PC through this address here, and on top of that, for anyone to connect to you from outside of your local network, you'll need to port forward your router to this IP address here. But you may run into an issue. What happens when people can't join you on the same Wi-Fi network, or over the internet? Well, over the internet, you'll need to port forward, for which we'll get to that in just a moment. You'll find super easy guides in the description down below to follow. 
However, for local connections, it's more than likely your firewall. If you're using a third-party antivirus or a firewall, you'll need to allow Minecraft port 25565 through there. Otherwise, for everyone else, hit start, type in firewall, and open Windows Defender with advanced security. If you're instead dropped into a different window that doesn't look like this, you'll need to click advanced on the left-hand side to get to this window here. Choose inbound rules, then new rule on the right-hand side. Choose inbound rules on the left-hand side, then new rule on the right-hand side. And inside of here, we'll be selecting port, next, TCP, and we'll type in 25565 here. We'll, note to, we'll make sure to copy this as we'll be pasting it in many times. So control A, control C, TCP, next, allow the connection, next, all three ticked, next, give it a name, I'll call it MC 1.19 and I'll click finish. Then I'll choose new rule once more, port, next, UDP this time, 25565, next, allow, next, all three ticked, next, and we'll call it MC 1.19 once more. Then I'll head to outbound rules, new rule, and we'll do the same thing. Port, next, TCP, paste it in, next, allow, next, all three, next, MC 1.19. Port, next, UDP, paste it in, next, allow, next, all three ticked, next, give it a name, and we can now finish and close our firewall. Now someone on the same local network can connect to us. For friends to connect to you from outside of your local network, you'll need to port forward to the address we found earlier. In the description down below, you'll find a simple guide for port forwarding that should explain it for pretty much any router. On top of that, you'll find a multi-router port forwarding guide if you're connected to a router, connected to a router, connected to the internet, or anything like that. For one simple router between you and the internet, the normal port forwarding guide should be more than enough. Otherwise, the multi-router port forwarding guide should help you if you have more than one router. It's that simple. It's incredibly simple to follow along with. I've tried to make it as simple as possible with an example, and by the end of it, after you've port forwarded port 25565, you can Google search what is my IP, copy the first result, and send that to your friends, as that's your external IP address that people can connect to you and therefore your server through. It's really quite simple. Congratulations, you're now running a 1.19 spigot or craft bucket server. It's really as simple as that. In order to save our server, type in save hyphen all and hit enter. If it doesn't work, try it again. There was a space there. And to close our server, type stop, hit enter. It'll then save and close the server completely. There we go. As long as that black window is open, your server is running, and as long as your computer is on, you're able to run the server. You can't turn off your computer or close that window, but you can minimize it, because closing it means your server is no longer running. You're hosting your own server, hence it's completely free, and you can customize it to your heart's content. You can create a mods folder here, or a plugins folder, that's what it's called, drop your plugin jars in here, and it's really simple from there on. There's thousands of guides that'll tell you what to do. Yes, it is a bit longer to use build tools, but it's definitely worth it as it means a 0% chance of viruses, etc. Unless something happens with the original creators of this, but it's a ton safer than using third-party downloads that other people have created and could very easily put their own malicious code into. Anyways, that's really about it for this quick guide. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Techno Behavior Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.